All right, so 7.1 properties of normal distribution. So right here's our, you know, we talked about it previously, about that's the shape of our normal distribution, the bell-shaped curve. We're gonna talk about, uh, talk about that in more detail in this section. So the probability dis dis density function, PDF, is an equation used to compute probabilities of continuous random variables. All right, so it must satisfy the following properties. Um, the total area under the graph must equal to one. So we're talking about uh, under here, that has to equal to one. And the height of the graph must be greater than or equal to zero for all possible values. So in other words, it can't, um, cannot be less than zero. Can I, uh, yep, can I be less than zero? In other words, can't be negative, it has to be positive. All right, a continuous random variable is normally distributed or has a normal probability distribution if its relative frequency histogram has the shape of the normal curve. That's the normal curve right there. All right, as far as the, um, the normal curve, we have our mean in the middle. And we have inflection points to the right and to the left of the mean. And so inflection points, just where the curvature of the graph changes, whether it goes concave up or concave down, basically being a U or upside down U. So whenever you add the standard deviation, that's what we did here, or subtract the standard deviation from the mean, you will have inflection points. Like I said, that's just where the curvature of the graph changes. All right, I scroll up. All right, so properties of the normal density curve. We have eight of them. I don't know why I wrote that. If it come back Was up. it necessary for us to write the graph that you had up there, the visual? Oh. You talking about this right here? Or you talking about the one I just erased? That one. Oh, well, it's up to you. I mean, I guess you don't necessarily have to, you know. Oh, what happened? Where'd it go? Okay. I go way up there like that. Okay. All right. Yes, it wasn't necessary. You should be all right. So uh, properties of the normal density curve. The normal curve is symmetric about the mean. And so and that's why I, that's probably why I wrote that. So that means your mean is in the middle. And then whatever's going on on the right side of the mean is also going on on the left side of your mean. So it's symmetric about the mean. It's reflected about the mean. Uh, two, your mean is equal to your median and your mode and has a single peak or the highest point at your mean. So once again, we're talking about our mean being in the middle and has its highest 
point at the mean. Number three, we already mentioned, it has inflection points at, um, has inflection points when you subtract a standard deviation from the mean and add a standard deviation to the mean, have those two inflection points. The area under the curve is equal to one. Uh, that's one thing you most definitely gonna have to hold on to. Everything under the curve, so everything under here is equal to one. All right, so I'm gonna say something in the chat. Oh, so did you want it? Cause I know you asked about it, did you? Yeah, cause I thought you were um, going to talk about the inflection points, but I think you just scrolled up kind of fast. I wasn't able to write it down. Yeah, yeah. all they did as far as inflection points, now scroll back up. Uh, all they did as far as inflection points, all they do is mention them. They don't really go into deep detail why, you know, because all they do is talking about that's where the curvature of the graph changes. So let's let her get that part. And then we'll go ahead back down. Yeah, let's see right there. Just let me know when you're ready to scroll up. I'm good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right. So um, number four, we're looking at the area under the curve is equal to one. So that means everything under the uh, curve is equal to one. So that means if you know one side, then you know the other. Sorry, I had a sneeze. So if you know uh, you know the area under the curve on the one side, and that means you know the other case, you can just subtract it from one. So if I know that 0.7 is to the left of my z-score or my data value, then I know 0.3 will be to the right of it because all you're doing is subtracting that 0.7 from one. So everything under the curve is equal to one. Number five, the area under the curve to the right of the mean equals half or 0.5, and the same goes for the left of the mean. So remember I said it was symmetric about the mean. Whatever goes on the right side goes on on the left side. So if 50% of your data is to the right side of it, that means 50% 50, 50 of your data should be the left side, to the left side of it as well. So that's all that is stating. Give you guys a chance to get there before I go or scroll up. All right, six, as X increases or goes to the right, the graph approaches but never reaches the horizontal axis, which is zero, and the same go for X decreasing. So talking about right here, notice how right here and right here, I don't have it connecting because according to the graph, it doesn't ever touch, the graph doesn't ever touch the horizontal axis or the horizontal line. Number seven is uh, one that we talked about already, but they reemphasize it here, which is the empirical rule. 
approximately 68% of your data or 68% of the area under the curve is within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% is within two standard deviations, and 99.7 is within three standard deviations. All right, and that's just a refresher of that graph. I don't know if anybody needs that or not. All right, so let's look at this next one. Or well, the first example it says the birth weights of full term babies are normally distributed with mean 300 uh, 3400 grams and sigma standard deviation is 505 grams. So just did this to reemphasize that uh, empirical rule process. So don't forget how the empirical rule work. First thing to remember that these percentages here, all of them stay the same. And that in the middle is always your mean. All right, so to find these values to the right of your mean, you're gonna add a standard deviation three times. So notice that's what we did here, right side of the mean, called the right side. We added 505 to 3,400 three different times. So first time we get 3,905, second time 4410, and then add it one more time, we get 4915. All right, and then to get the left side, we subtract 505 from 3,400 three different times. And that's what happened here. Subtract, the five, uh, subtract 505 from 3,400, you get 2,895. Then here, 2,390, then do it one more time, 1,885. So make sure we're okay before we go any further. Once again, your mean is in the middle. Then from there, you add 505 three different times to get the right side, the three values on the right side of your mean, and then subtract 505, which is a standard deviation, from 3,400 to get the left side, the three values on the left side of your mean. All right, so then once you have those six values, you can go ahead and put them in the chart. 
Oh, where'd it go? And so that's how you find the three values on each side. All right, questions, any questions? All right, can I scroll up? Anybody hold on to it? All right, don't worry about this right here. It has nothing to do with you guys. So here it says, shade the region that represents the proportion of full-term babies who weigh more than 4,410 grams. All right. So... Um, the key phrase here is more than. If you're talking about more than a value, you're talking about to the right of. Let's see, less than, greater than. Make sure you put that right there. I don't need that. So, if you're talking about just shading what represents um, more than 4410, you're talking about shading to the right of it. And then if they were to ask less than, you will be shading to the left of it. So notice all they ask for, shade the region that represents the proportion of full-term babies who weigh more than 4410. Talking about more than, that's to the right of. And then, like I said right here, it says less than, then you will shade to the left of. Questions, any questions? All right, okay, so let's see it for seven one. Probably that before we look at seven two. So let's go to 7.2. So I'm going to take this, what we did in 7.1 and apply it. So applications of the normal distribution, standardized, standardizing a normal random variable. And we will do that by using z-scores. We talked about z-scores previously. Now we're going to actually use them in an application. All right, so your z-scores, remember that's the symbolism, x minus mu over sigma. But remember, all that means is that you're going to take your data value, subtract the mean, divide about the standard deviation. So that's always what you want to remember. You take your data value minus the mean, divide about a standard deviation. That will be your z-score. All right. So in order to uh, use your z-scores effectively, you need the chart that's on pages A11 and A12. I'll show you what that looks like. Let's see. Do I already have it pull up? No, I don't. Give me one second. All right, 
right, so your Z score chart look like this. It has the negative side, this is A11, and then positive side, which is A12. You can go into the E text and type in A11 or A12, and these will pop up. All right, show you how to use that in a second, but I'm just giving you an idea of what it looks like. All right. So if we have Z equal to 1.23, Z scores are always rounded to two decimal places. Don't forget that. And the way we use the chart is that there's a left column and then there's a top row. On the left column, you're looking for this part, 1.2. Then on the top row, you're looking for 0 0.03, and that's what I have right here. So basically, notice right here you have 1.2, up here you have 0 0.03. That makes up the 1.23. All right, so let's go to the chart so I can show you. Let's see, can I write on this? Yeah, there we go. So you have 1.2, which is right here. And then your three is right here. And then you go to wherever they meet. That would be the chart value that you're pulling. 0 0.8907. All right, so before we go any further, is everybody okay with what I just did? Our Z, if our z-score is 1.23, the 1.2 is right here, the 3 is right here, then where they meet, 0 0.8907. Now, if you notice right here, it says it has all of this to the left, and your z-score is right here. So basically saying that whatever value you pull from this chart represents what's to the left of your z-score. And remember, we talked about um, if I want to know what's to the right of my z-score, all I have to do is subtract it from one. So this chart always gives you what is to the left of. Remember, left of always represents less than as well. So this chart always gives you the amount of data that's less than the value that you're talking about. So this ch chart, once again, always gives you less than. And that's what I wrote right here in purple. The chart will always give, will always represent what is to the left of the data value, which is less than. All All right. Then here, to find out what is to the right of the data of the uh, value, you will subtract the chart value from one. All right, pretty good. All right, so a pediatrician obtains the heights of her three-year-old female patients. The heights are approximately normally distributed with mean 38.72 inches and standard deviation 3.17 inches. Determine the proportion of the three-year-old females that have a height less than 35 inches. I give you guys a chance to write that down.
All right. So they gave us the mean, they gave us a standard deviation, and our data value is what we are evaluating. We want to know uh, how many of our three year olds, not three year olds, yeah, three year olds have a height less than 35 inches. So X is going to be our 35. That's what we wrote right here. Just gathering the information that's given to us. Mean is 38.72, standard deviation 3.17. And then our data value, the value in question is 35. So then I do my z-score calculation, data value minus the mean divided by standard deviation, 35 minus 38.72 divided by 3.17. That gives us negative 1.17. Remember your z-score is always rounded to two decimal places. All right, so then we go to the chart. That's negative 1.17. So just reemphasizing how this chart is going to work for us. Negative 1.17. Go to the negative part. Negative 1.1 is right here. The 0 0.07 is right here. So we follow that all the way down. And that gives us 0.1210. And so that's what I have right here. So chart always gives less than. And so that means we're going to use the chart value because that's what it asked for less than. So the proportion of the pediatrician three year old females who are less than 35 inches tall is 0 0.1210. So, you know, you could convert that to a percentage. You could have said 12.1%, you know, by moving the decimal two places to the right, but that's all they asked of you, that 0 0.1210. All right, questions on that. All right, pretty good before we scroll up. Make sure we're all right. All right, so we're going to use the previous problem to find that uh, the probability that a randomly selected three year old girl is taller than 37 inches. So this time, key phrase here is taller than. Well, first thing we, need, we want to do is convert it to a z score. Convert, convert that uh, uh, 37 to a z-score. So we do 37 minus 38.72 over 3.17, which converts to negative 0.54 ultimately. All right, so then we go to the chart. So do the same thing that uh, just did previously. We have negative 0.5 on the left column, 0.4 on the top row. Then where they meet is our chart value and that's 0 0.2946. And then we have our So remember the chart always give less than, but to find greater than, we're gonna subtract the chart value from one. So we were looking for you no know, taller than, which is another way, this, another way of saying greater than. 
So we're going to subtract the chart value from 1. 1 minus 2. 1 minus 0.2946 is going to be 0 0.7054. And yep, so that's it. So you're talking about taller than, greater than, hotter than. You know, there'll be key phrases that will represent the same thing. Um, more than, you will subtract your uh, value from one above. Subtract the chart value from one. Any questions? All right, so next one. Once again, we're using the previous information, find a probability that a randomly selected three-year-old girl um, that is between 35 and 40 inches tall inclusive. Alright, so we have two different data values this time. We have 35 and 40, and we want to convert both of them to z-scores. Still using the same mean and standard deviation. So I call x1 35, call x2 40, or call 40 x2 35 x1. And so that means my first z-score is going to be negative 1.17, second z-score will be 0.40. All right, any problem? So it's still the same procedure. Find the z-scores, then go to the chart for each one of them. All right, so 0.12 and 0.654. So here, just to give you a diagram as to uh, how this works. So, you know, the first one, now your chart always give you what's to the left of that Z-score. So the first one, that's to the left of Z1. Second one here is to the left of Z2. Now, if I take that piece that's in Z1 and subtract it from what's in Z2, then that will give me what's between them. So that's what we'll do. We're going to subtract our data value. And that's what you have right here. So to find what is between the data values, you subtract the two chart values. And that's what we did right here, 0.6554 minus 0.1210. And that gives us 0.5344. All right. Questions or anything I've said up to this point? Make sure we're good. All 
All right. So when it comes to 7.2, there are only three scenarios that you have to be concerned about. Um, there will be key phrases that will let you know which one you're dealing with. It might just say less than, it might say more than, but if not, depending on the application, like we saw shorter, um, you know, lets us know less than, but taller would have been greater than. So the same type of thing, but um, less than, shorter, colder, below, under, um, that means you would just use the chart value that you get and that would be your answer, the chart value we answer. Anything that suggests greater than, greater than, more than, taller, high, hotter, above, um, that would, you would take that chart value, subtract it from one, because that would represent greater than, to the right of. And then between, there's only one way that I could think of this is between, that's between, but um, you will subtract the chart values from each other. So those are your only three scenarios, only three possible outcomes. Either you're going to accept the chart value, subtract the chart value from one, or subtract the two chart values from each other. All right. Make sure we are okay. Any questions? Any questions? All right. So, believe it or not, that's it for 7.2. Uh, 7, 1, 7, 2 are relatively short, but that's it for those two chapters, those two sections. That closes out the chapter, actually. Um, so, you know, next class, we'll be looking at 8, 1 and 8, 2. And that will be it as far as new material is concerned, because then you guys have a week that I'll, you know, give you to, you know, ask whatever questions you want to ask. And then that'll be our last week. We said that um, May 5th, I believe we said your final. Yep, your final is going to be on May 5th. So you have a week of me not t uh, bringing any new material. And then May 5th will be your, your final exam. So just making sure we have this visual. Oh, it's right here still. So yeah, we're gonna cover 8182 tomorrow, next class. Then this next week is for you to ask whatever questions you wanna ask, because you may still even have questions on stuff previous to chapter seven, chapter eight, that's fine. Whatever you wanna ask, you got those two classes to ask it. And then no class on 5-3, because I have another final exam that will bleed into your, you guys' time. Uh, then we'll take our final exam on May 5th. Uh, then you will have until Sunday, May 9th to submit whatever work you want to submit. All right. Questions on anything I've said? Everybody good? Details as far as the rest of the class? Everybody good? All right. Questions mm -hmm. on anything? Yes. Just, just making sure you said no class on the third. Right, no class on the third. Yep. Okay. And then were there um eight properties of normal density of the normal density curve? Because I wrote eight, but I don't have anything there for some reason. So. I think it was seven. I think I was anticipating eight because I was thinking about chapter eight or something else in chapter eight. No, it was just seven. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then okay. my last question is um this is late, but mm -hmm. for the binomial probability distribution was there like an online calculator we were supposed to be using or are we supposed to be doing those calculations by hand uh you can use an online calculator let me go to oh, i don't have it oh, hold on one second i can show you I know you'll probably calculate to see if that's good. Yeah, let me see a stat trick. Yep, this one right here worked. So if you go to binomial probability calculator, stat trick, that's a good one. 
because once you type in the number of successes, number of trials, well, uh, uh, probability of success, number of trials, and then the number of successes, then that'll it'll give you all of your scenarios right there. Okay. okay. All right. You know, let me know if you have any issues with using it. Yep. All right. Anything, anybody, anything, anybody, before we close out today, make sure we are good. All right. So once again, next class, we'll look at chapter eight. And then uh, next week, we will uh, be reviewing the whole time, making sure you have questions, uh, making sure your questions are answered, if you have them, and then prepping you for your final. So you guys final, I believe, I told you, it's just going to be on seven and eight. So, um, yep, yep. So that's what it be. That's what it should be. As a matter of fact, before I let you go, let me make sure that that review has been posted. Is it not going to let me in? Anyway, I can check on that later. All right. So um, I can see you guys on Wednesday. If you guys are good, I'm good. Um, you have a good one. Be safe. And I'll see you Wednesday.